Hey, Justin Chamnus here, and as promised to a lot of my students, I'm making a series right now of videos that are me explaining to you how to fill out the agreements if you're going to be a transaction engineer. Now, these are my proprietary agreements. I'm not an attorney or any of that stuff, so you guys know all that. These agreements are for locking the deals down with the homeowner. And then you got to find a good title company or closing attorney or somebody to wrap everything up and put it together with a nice bow on top and close things up the right way for where you live. But at least these agreements will get the homeowner locked into a deal with you. Now, this is cash discount offers. This is subject to straight subject to wraparounds. This is subject to with a seller carry back also. And then we're also going to talk about contract for deed, land contract. These are executory contracts. We're going to talk about lease options and straight options. And I'm going to go through each of these agreements, which you can find for free in my transaction engineer course over at justinchamness.com. So, yes, I do give away this information. You can have it. That's right. You can get it for free. But this is how you're going to fill the agreements out. Now, today, I'm going to share with you how to fill out the agreement for the all cash discount offer. So let's jump into it really quickly. And if you start at the transaction engineer course and you come down to the menu and you click cash offers purchase and sale agreement, you'll find that there is, as you scroll down, information about how to do a cash offer and these are these are typically ugly house deals right these cash discount kind of offers there's a purchase and sale agreement down here and i want to go through it today and show you how to fill it out all right it's got some nuances to it that are pretty cool <coughs> excuse me this first page you want to throw away all right the standard purchase and sale agreement all right parties this is the investor name so let's say justin chamness or perhaps my llc referred to as buyer agrees to buy and the seller's name john doe homeowner referred to as seller agrees to sell the property commonly known as one two three apple cart way let's say for example so now you might be wondering oh my gosh it didn't say and or signs well hold, hold on we're gonna get there the property is in Jackson County. Okay. The property will be conveyed by general warranty deed. The seller agrees to deliver the property in its present as is condition. This is just like an ugly house deal. Except as otherwise specified herein, seller warrants that he knows of no latent defects, no floodplains and studies or other problems with the lands, lots, and agrees to remove all debris from the dwelling. Total purchase price to be paid by the buyer is this is your discount cash offer. Now, if you want to know how to put together a discount cash offer, what the formulas are, that's all covered in the free course in the transaction engineer course. And you can get that over at my website, justinchamus.com. Buyer has paid this is earnest money. So maybe it's a hundred, maybe it's ten dollars, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a Dr. Pepper and uh. A watermelon. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Earnest money can be pretty much uh, any amount of money. <laughs> All right. So $500 maybe. I don't know. But that'd be a lot if you're a wholesaler. So usually I'll just put 10 or 100 or something like that. Whatever makes sense. As earnest money, which will remain as a deposit toward the purchase and closing until return due to seller's failure to perform or a contingency not being met. Earnest money will be held by, and then here is the title company, all right, that you're planning on closing this deal up with. If you don't have a title company, then what you would write here is to be determined. Okay, the words to be determined. Buyer will pay usually 100% of all the buyer side closing costs. Seller will usually pay 100% of all of their customer, customary seller side closing costs, all right? If if the buyer is going to pay the seller's closing cost, then you would put zero here. Okay. Seller will pay 0% of all the usual and customary seller side closing costs. If the buyer is going to pick up everything, then put that there. Seller shall pay prorations noted below. Seller is required to pay any transfer tax assessed on this purchase and sale. 
prorations. That means the title company guy or the closing attorney will prorate things, all the fees and taxes and so on and so forth to the day of closing. Okay. And so then we move on to insurable title and closing. Now the seller warrants that he or she is vested with full powers to an authority to enter into this agreement. If the seller has marketable title and insurable title, no encroachments and property is not in a floodplain zone. Then this agreement will be closed in the deed and other closing papers delivered within 10 to 30 days. What this is saying is, is that when the seller and the title company are ready to go, okay, when the seller has presented marketable title and the title company has shown this, then this agreement uh, will be closed and the deed transferred within okay this is the time frame set so instead of picking a closing date 30 days later what i normally would do here is say it when the seller is proven through the title company and a title check and all that that there is marketable title and that things are ready to close that we will close then within seven days 10 days okay whenever the title company is ready all right after the following conditions have been met seller and all occupants shall leave the property and provide unlimited access to buyer to show the property all right so we've got to be able as a wholesaler to show the property and i might say i need saturday uh such and such a date to show my buyers okay i might i might put various times okay i might just write the words various times scheduled with the seller okay it, it, this is remember creative real estate be flexible here but i also if i have a nice buyers list i might just line this up for saturday number two all tenants leases options and other agreements related to the property have been legally terminated that's right so i'm getting a house here right it's not got a bunch of stuff going on with it or anybody living in it number three the seller provides buyer with a copy of the key to the premises during the showings okay Number four, all stipulations and conditions of this agreement have been met. Number five, buyer receives notice from the seller in writing that these conditions have all been met. Now, this is a little sticky, but that's okay. You might need that sometime. But when the title company says, hey, listen, they're clear, they're they're good to close and all of that, uh, we're good to close. Okay, that that's good enough. I don't need it in special writing from the seller, but I might need that someday. I might demand that, so I want to keep my options open. In the event that this agreement is unable to close on or before the above stated date, the buyer or seller may, by written notice to the other party, notice must, must be received on or before the closing date, extend this agreement's closing date up to seven days. So I might up here put 10 days after you're ready to close, we'll close. But then what if I don't, don't have that? Well, I'll just extend it myself another seven days. All right, sometimes you need that for the title company. Maybe they get busy, all right? Buyer and seller agree that the time of time is of the essence of this contract. The seller or tenant and all occupants shall vacate the property and move all personal property and debris at least 24 hours prior to closing. All right, if title is not marketable and insurable, title defects or encroachments will be cured at the seller's expense. The buyer will close within 10 days of the cure of those things. Okay, so in other words, if something pops up and the seller's like, oh, I can't close because my brother now says that he needs all the money. Uh, he, he showed there's the mechanics lien on it somehow popped up at the last minute. Uh, something happened over at the title company where now oh, oh, all of a sudden there's a tax bill that we didn't see before. Okay, well, that's all right. After they fix that problem, I got 10 days after that. Okay, that's nice. If seller cannot provide marketable insurable title by closing, then the buyer can at his sole discretion, either A, extend the agreement, or B, have seller return to buyer all earnest money paid and fees incurred for curing title and preparing for closing, including, but not limited to surveys, attorney fees, and appraisal. That's right. I'm not doing this at my expense. If you're going to screw us all up, Mr. Seller, that's what it's saying, basically. Once these monies are returned to buyer, this agreement will be null and void. Loss or damage. Okay, you can read that. Default and timing. 
If the buyer fails to perform, here's your get out of jail card. Seller's exclusive remedy is to retain the earnest money as a full liquidated damage. If seller fails to perform, buyer will be entitled to the return of the earnest money as full liquidated damages. In the event this agreement is placed in the hands of an attorney, for enforcement, the prevailing party shall be entitled to recover their court costs and attorney's fees. The, watch this. This agreement is assignable. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and underline that right now, just so everybody knows that this is assignable. <laughs> All parties agree that email and or digital signatures initials are legal and binding. This offer shall become null and void if not executed or signed by the seller and received return to the buyer by such and such a date. So this is, hey, Mr. Homeowner, you're not going to have two weeks to shop me. You're going to have... You know, 48 hours from now to decide or I'm done. Okay, that's basically trying to push the seller into making a decision instead of shopping your offer. Okay, this is legally binding document. If not understood, consult a lawyer. Executed and sealed instrument this blank day. Put the date here. The buyer, you... Your, your company name, what, what have you, signs here. I like to sign it as such. Justin Chamness for Low Priced Bargain Properties, LLC. Okay, that way I use my LLC, but I'm personally signing for it as the manager of the company. Justin Chamness for Low Priced Bargain Properties, LLC. Now that has a nice ring to it. It also looks really good up here on the first page when you put that in there as the buyer. Okay. So you put here as the buyer, the investor's name, Justin Chamness for Low Price Bargain Properties, LLC, referred to as buyer. Okay. And then you sign it that way down here at the bottom. And then the seller's signature's here, if there's one or if there's two. Okay, so you can see that filling out a cash discount offer purchase and sale agreement actually quite simple now again there may be things that the title company will bring up or they'll want to see or want to have from either you or the seller and that's great that's what you hire them for that's what they're there for now let me also add once this document is signed by both the seller and you what you'll do with it is the following you'll attach it to an email and send it to the title company of choice Sometimes it's it's yours. Maybe it's the seller's. You're going to send that document over to the title company with whatever earnest money you promised, or or you're going to tell ask them how to send the earnest money. You're also going to include in the email with this document attached to it your contact information and the seller's contact information. If you have a buyer or when you get a buyer lined up to assign this to, you are going to send the title company their contact information. And when I say contact information in all these three parties cases, I'm talking about name, phone number, email. Okay. And this is very important because the title company or the closing attorney is going to try to orchestrate this whole closing and they need to be able to reach all three parties. And if you do this with some with some niceties in the email and thanking them for their work, letting them know that if there's any questions to contact you and you'll be of any assistance you can, if you check in once or twice during the process with them and ask them if there's anything of assistance you can provide, they will not only be very grateful for it, but they will also bend over backwards to make this deal work for you. Okay, that's what I have found. They want your business, they want you to be happy, but it's also extremely helpful if you provide not just a contract with names on it, but contact information for the seller, yourself, and when you find a buyer, or if you have one, the buyer that's going to be getting wow. the, uh, you're gonna do the assignment with. Okay, so do that, attach the document, ask them how to send the earnest money, the $10 or the $100, They'll take that. They'll put it into escrow. Next thing you know, Bob's your uncle. You've got a title company that will call you or email you and say, hey, we have closing set up for Friday. 
the seller is going to be here at 10 a.m. The buyer is going to be here at 1 p.m. And where do you want us to send the check or do you, would you like us to wire it? How would you like to be paid? Okay, let me add one more thing here. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going you're gonna to want to add an invoice somewhere along the line for the amount of your assignment fee. So that's just helpful for the title company to know that you have sent pre-closing a, a, an invoice. And if you don't know how to do an invoice, just pull up your word processor and search invoice. Go to ChatGPT and write invoice to the title company. Write the title company's name and phone number and say, come up with an invoice for me. And my name is Justin Chamness. Okay. And please say that actually. And then chat GPT will draw up invoice letter. All it is is a letter that says, please pay me by mail. Please pay me by check. I'll pick it up at the office or please wire it into my bank account. And here's my bank account wire information. If you'll do that, then they'll not have to hunt you down to try to figure out how to pay you. And trust me, you don't want them to have to hunt you down to try to pay you. You want to already know, hey, on Friday, the seller is going to be there at 10 a.m. The buyer is going to be there at 1 p.m. And at 3 p.m., I'm swinging by the title company or they're going to wire me the funds shortly after closing directly into my bank account. Doesn't that sound nice? All right. This is a little some tips on how to actually close up a deal smoothly and practically and get things done as a professional wholesaler using a very, very simple all cash discount offer agreement. Next time we get together, I'm going to be talking to you about subject two, and I'm going to show you how to fill out a subject two agreement. Now, again, it's just to tie up the house with the homeowner and you're going to take it to, to a title company or closing attorney. So all these tips will come in handy, no matter what strategy we're talking about. So be prepared to learn how to fill out a subject two agreement to lock the house in and then turn it over with all the contact information for everybody. And also you're going to want to provide an invoice when you find your buyer and everything too, just like I described here, but next time subject to, so I know you've got to be interested in that. I mean, how many of you actually out there have a subject to agreement that you could use? If somebody told you today, I'm going to walk away from the house by the end of the month, you can have it. I don't give a crap. Just take it off my hands. Are you ready? Are you ready next time? I'll see you later and you will be ready. All right. Bye-bye.